So, who is going to win? How about you guys tell us? You've got a team that is undefeated, that put up a pretty strong performance, probably against weak opposition, and then you've got probably one of the largest esports orgs in the world and one of the most popular teams in all of Latin America, and it's not really much of a surprise to see the gulf between these two teams with Liquid running away with that community vote. Yeah, so I mean, you know, stats be darned, uh, but honestly, I'm 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 not that surprised. And I, it could be. I mean, we're talking about how Liquid has the info. They're right down here right now. It feels like uh, Liquid has in the recent performance. They have been doing very well. Um, they definitely could be on the rise right now. I mean, they've had a lot of time to practice and get prepared, as has all, or has have all of these teams. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But I I feel like they've got what it takes. And with their current roster. I'm pretty confident that they could do well. This community vote, though, is very askew. I didn't expect it to be quite as large of a difference as it was. Yeah. I, When you come into the community vote, you always know that teams that have very large social media followings or players that have very large social media followings tend to do quite well because a lot of times there are people who vote for the team that's their favorite, not necessarily the team that they think is going to do the best. Yeah. And then sometimes you get people who vote against their team's best interest because they think that their team might win-lose. It's always tough to try and get the methodology <laughs> of why people vote in which way. So seeing a team like Liquid being as popular in the region as they are and having such a long track record of success in Latin America up until probably four months ago, yeah, five months ago, six months ago, et cetera, it's not, not really a surprise to see them see them do that well in the community vote. But I think it's a, I think you're kind of underselling Black Dragons there because Liquid, Liquid had a number of rounds against Immortals where they really struggled and that was on Liquid. That wasn't on Immortals playing well. I'm not trying to undersell Black Dragons. No, no, not you, the community vote. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. No, I agree with you completely. I think Black Dragons deserves a little bit more respect than 18%, um, uh, but it is early yet in the season. Yes. They had the organization change. We've seen this happen time and time again. Teams change hands and people get confused. All that said, though, we finally have the match for you guys, and it's going to be, again, Border. Pretty exciting and a great map to start us off here. It'll be Liquid on defense, Black Dragons on attack, and because of that, Liquid will start the bands. We haven't seen Border yet between any teams in Latin America, so this oh. will be its first debut, or debut, rather. Both. We could say debut is a thing. I mean, that's not really a word, Michael. But we can say it is. Well, sure, we can say it's a thing. Team yeah. Liquid will ban first, and they'll take Glaz out of the equation, and the Sniper, who cares a lot about the details, <laughs> will be removed from the hands of Black Dragons. We'll see how they respond with possibly a Hard Breacher or taking out a utility-based operator. And they're going to take the Buck away. And Buck, a staple in Liquid's composition. Interestingly enough, hmm, especially on Border, Buck playing quite a prominent role in the vertical play. of Obviously, Border only has one site on that second floor. So you usually have the Buck playing from below in that site. But then when you rotate downstairs, that buck will be making his home above. Black Dragon's second band will be Mute, who seen some changes himself. He now has access to an SMG-11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was about to say the same exact thing about the buck. To be honest with you, that's probably one of the most well-targeted bands we've seen in a while. Really great decision-making there. What it is going to do is force uh, more emphasis on operators like Ash and Zofia. So we'll probably see more of them than we otherwise would have. Uh, you're going to need that soft destruction from below. It is pretty important when attacking armory. There's only so many ways that you can influence the armory site. That's why it is one of the best sites to defend on this map. And one of those ways is vertical destruction from below. So you'll be seeing the Zofia coming in in lieu of the buck. You also have a jackal who could assist with the Zofia, clear out downstairs using his ability, then whip out the secondary shotgun, possibly do some damage. The problem is that secondary shotgun, I think, has even worse range than the buck skeleton key. So I don't know. Maybe it's a it's an idea, a potential thing to do, but Attackers we'll see. Jackal's got a good toolkit, obviously, and the shotgun really does help round him out as an operator, but I feel like Jackal's biggest application of that shotgun comes from the top down. Exactly. Right? If you're, if you're it's underneath, the range. It's the range. And if, if you're underneath trying to use that shotgun yeah. below, you're going to you're gonna get, get, you're gonna get, get on get, something. You need to get on something. You're going to get middling results with that one. I mean, not that it's that much of an issue. Sexy Cake does tend to play Zofia on Liquid. And I mean, Nesk does play Ash from time to time. Oh, really? So I mean, you've got <laughs> you've got operators at your disposal to, to accomplish that yeah. soft destruction right there. Also, not to mention the fact that Latin America as a region does tend to see the most sledge play as well. But that's obviously going to be a factor because sledge can't do any destruction vertically. 
but he can do it from the top down. So expect to possibly see him if you have the defense going down to ventilation workshops, bathroom tellers, you know, customs, etc. So we'll get things started off here. First round on defense for Liquid. Black Dragons beginning their assault. They're going to be bringing quite a bit of utility on their side of things, being answered by Liquid having it in spades as well. And it will be the second floor of Armory as site number one. We have uh, about 30 seconds in here. Yeah, this is not a uh, terribly surprising bomb site. The setup's pretty standard. Uh, I like that we've got the Maestro, of course. He's going to be uh, one of those staples. Again, you've got Echo Band, so you need to bring Maestro. You just, it's just a requirement. Also, lots of information ops. Uh, you got the uh, Valkyrie and the Mira both, so that's going to be a good combination here to help hold this top floor. Sexy Cake has already eaten some damage. Not entirely sure what from. Very likely just a spray through the window into office while he was setting things up. But that is unfortunate for him, especially considering he's the three armor. A big part of his kit is that he can tank more bullets. And the, the amount there has just been chipped away. Heavy emphasis here on the B side for the defense, but rightfully so, as uh, that seems to be the target for Black Dragons right this minute. Liquid, good to adjust this way. I like the setup they've got here with the fully open walls, too. That's going to mean if they lose control of uh, Archives, they're not going to lose the round as a result. With Border, what we find is that there really isn't often uh, a dedicated a dedicated split push. Usually what you'll find is that on Border, it's an all-in sort of deal. You'll either completely take control of Fountain and Office and then push inside of Archives, or you'll push over on the Armory side of things. And it's a bit of a wasted utility, actually, there from Ion, as that evil eye was open. He could have just shot it with his gun, and unfortunately, that hesitation and the mistake will be Liquid getting the very first kill. Excellent job from Nesk to read that situation accordingly. You'll take the Zofia out of action. All that the Zofia was able to put down was one of those grenades, but two concussive mines will still uh, will not be used. So. Black Dragons will respond with just 45 seconds to go. Ness picks up his second kill on Hugzord. The Jackal falls. GDN low on HP for Black Dragons means that they are in tough position. And a third from Ness. So he'll finish off the Thermite. Panico on top of Vents looking in towards the bomb site. The Diffuser being dropped once again due to Ness, who's now looking for yet another kill. He sees it, cannot land the shots on the IQ of Iblax, and they'll tussle. As Iblax comes in, a beautiful shot on the Gohan. He holds that diffuser inside a site, but there's lots of plant denial on to liquid side of things. Iblacks exposed to the hole in the wall. The pre fires through, cannot connect as there's Zig, and the diffuser goes down successfully. But there's Paula to grab one. Last one's on Vents, and Zig will finish it off. And liquid, a great rally and an easy transition in that post plan for them to be able to disable the diffuser and take their first round. Huge part of that round to me was just simple lack of CCTV control for the attackers. Black Dragons, they made their push into offices, but they didn't account for the flank there. And it's really not that hard to do, I gotta be honest. Stick somebody in the balcony if you don't want to take full control of CCTV, but you can deny break room to Nesk and thus a whole flank. The open strategy there that Liquid played around was perfect. They had everything going their way. and the the. The real, you know, I want to say the crime or the uh, the problem there for Black Dragons is that the way Liquid played isn't especially, you know, uh, strategically sound, if I'm being honest. The way that they played was very open. It's playing, it's having an excess of angles, forcing your opponent to account for too many so they get, you know, tripped up and confused. That's why everything was open. And the sad part about that is that Black Dragons can so easily counter it. And I feel as though it, 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 it could have been a totally different round if Black Dragons had simply cleared a little bit slower. They had taken their time, but a little bit more deliberate, and noticed how many angles were open up. That was the big thing, was that you had Ness playing inside a break room, and just they didn't, either they didn't know he was there, Right. or they didn't dedicate anybody to trying to flush him out. And because you had three or four bodies from Black Dragons attacking the window into offices, you put yourself in a very vulnerable position where Nesk with that 416 is a very powerful gun. Nesk is one of the most accurate players in the entire region. You're going to imagine that he's going to be able to pick off those kills, and it doesn't help. You have a misuse of the Zofia utility, and that yeah. stumble is what really costs you. And it's, it's... Okay, you have a player playing at the top of East Stairs and you realize, oh shoot, you know what? 
We forgot to take CCTV control, and that's causing us problems on our flank. What's the solution there? Well, you know, you can rotate him into CCTV. Hopefully have someone drone for him. If you have someone drone for him, that takes 20 seconds, maybe, maybe 30. But overall, it's not a whole, it's not a large expenditure. And take the time to do it. Well, it's all said and done though. Uh, the round went to Team Liquid. Well done to them playing those angles properly. Now we're gonna see them go to ventilation and uh, Black Dragons will show us their attempt at attack here. They have taken CCTV control this time around, so that's a good uh, potential rotation for any of the roamers upstairs cut off. It's a pretty quick entry as well from Black Dragons. They're gonna have a sledge on their team to do the soft destruction that they need that you can't do with a buck. There's still a jackal on there with that shotgun too. And of course, as we noted last round, because Liquid won and Liquid is downstairs, you know, Black Dragons is gonna have a little bit of a better time with that secondary from Jackal for soft destruction. So good fragging prowess on BD's side of things, but they just aren't gonna check their corners yet again. And that's Sexy Cake, able to just clobber Eye Blacks with the smoke, playing inside of Archives Fortified with two reinforcements. Just over top of the A-bomb site with the open hatch. It's a pretty common place to see, but I don't think Black Dragons was expecting Sexy Cake to be quite as aggressive. Sexy Cake taking a grenade to the face, surviving the encounter. He'll drop back to sight. Really good that he managed to survive that, though it was uh, mostly down to Ion just barely missing his grenade. A nice attempt, though, on his part. At least some damage done. Evil Eye also taken out. That's going to be Sledge really paying for himself. Maybe it was a good thing in the end that the buck got banned. Now, I mean, not really, but... Ness going to be playing inside of the small office upstairs, and he's just about to get a kill, but misses some really important shots before finally taking down Hugzord, though he did eat some damage and quite a lot at that. Paulo able to get GDN before Ion's refrags onto Paulo, and it's just down to Ion and Panix upstairs. Still trying to clear things out. Panico actually all the way on the east stairs. So he's pretty far detached from his teammates, and or teammate, rather, and unable to assist him. Nesk exposed on the stairs, but will land the headshot. Barely any HP. It would have taken a single bullet there from Panico. They just didn't pull the trigger fast enough. Amazing there was no refrag there from Ion with how close he was just managing to try and control this. But I mean, that round was over a minute ago with the way that yeah. Liquid was able to pick up those three kills to start things off. A bit surprising that they would have Panico go towards the stairs with no coverage. It didn't look like at all from Black Dragon's part, uh, sort of uh, perspective that they had the drones. They were completely blind on intel. If they did have drones still remaining, it didn't help them at all in where they needed to go. And I think that this liquid keeping two bodies upstairs is very normal for border. Something that Black Dragon's should have known. Typically, you'll shoot out both of the hatches from above. You'll have somebody play up there. If you have a mirror on the board, you can stick her up there. Of course, for liquid, they were leaving the smoke and the lesion there. I was really surprised with what appeared to be a bit of a sloppy entry from Black Dragons. And now this is the second round in a row where it seems like they just are not able to get the right intel on where Liquid is playing in order to counter them. And they're just walking in blind and getting just absolutely torn to pieces. It's confusing for a, f a number of reasons. First reason, Jackal's been in play. And okay. That's a, I, mean, I don't really need to explain that. But if you're if you're a newer viewer, uh, if you maybe not super familiar with Siege, uh, I will. Jackal. His main role, his main utility, is clearing out roamers because he can see those footprints and he can track them. So if anyone's playing upstairs, it's really easy for the Jackal to isolate them with his team and take them down. It saves a lot on droning time. Okay, that's the first reason. Second reason, this is border, okay? All of the default locations and all the places that you're gonna roam, they've been really ironed out. Everybody knows exactly what's going on in this map. You know, it's, it's very tactical. It's really easy to figure out. And there's not a whole lot of places to hide upstairs on this map. There really aren't. It's too e it takes so little time to clear them one by one. And, and that's the big thing, isn't it? The end is that Black Dragons are not being very thorough. You know, they're droning something out and then leaving it. They're not holding that flank. They're, or they're just not droning it out at all. And they're pushing in one by one as, you know, just by themselves. There's not a whole lot of teamwork going on right now, and it's a little bit disheartening. It doesn't help that because Black Dragons is getting caught off guard, they're not getting the shots they need to to win the gunfights. And they're losing those gunfights because they're not anticipating people being there. I should also mention, though, we should also mention that Team Liquid have been playing pretty well. Nesk, after he ate about 75 damage, down to one bullet's worth of HP, he was on the main stairs. He should have lost to Panico there. 
and he managed to land a very crucial headshot. Had it been anything other than a headshot, he would have lost that engagement a without a doubt. But Nesk, his aim showed up in that one, and Liquid overall have been showing up. Already some early interactions with Eye Blacks on the flashing red, just getting away with the skin of his teeth, as that's the IQ. Very damaged on Black Dragon's side of things, playing on East Stairs and looking all the way over towards Customs and Passport. In a decent position to catch somebody coming out of the site, as he can see over towards a little bit of that sliver of the Customs doorway, but more importantly, he's also on a very important flank watch. And what this will do is mean that there's gonna be nobody who can really surprise Black Dragons when they go to get the wall into customs. That's exactly what will happen with GDN's exothermic charge blowing open just a portion and giving Black Dragons easy entry into the site. Now, of course, it's not quite as easy because BD has not been able to clear out above and we just caught a glimpse of Team Liquid rotating. Reloading. They're still holding on. So Liquid is up top and in a great position to greet Black Dragons and we'll see if for the third round in a row, BD is going to stumble to get the information required to be able to pull off this push before their execute can begin. Now we've talked about this a lot before. I mean, really the secret to holding customs is holding CCTV and Liquid is doing just that. Black Dragons though will get the first kill of the round. Sexy Kate goes down and that's to the Jackal Pugzord. So great job there putting that roam clear to work. But I believe it was actually on the push into customs itself, taking out one of the anchors. So interesting roll swaps. Some damage being done there to Vanico, and he is going to be a little bit more wary of taking that fight moving forward. Ion just outside of Passport, working his way to the site along with Hugzord, and they've got a nice crossfire going on to the small office, but it's not going to net any kills just yet. Now, speaking of just yet, I mean, we're on the last 20 seconds here, and uh, they really need to make a push, and by they, I, of course, mean Black Dragons. Liquid are in great positions to hold this out. Valkyrie from the side, that's Nesk, will get one and fall back. His position now aware for his opponents will expose them all as they attempt to rush him. Zig, Gohan, together, will collapse onto those players rushing into the Valkyrie and leaving just Panico in the same position who will fall to Paulo. So, a truly confusing round there for Black Dragons and a really well set up round for Liquid. Uh, that whole main hallway was a death trap. Once again, falling on the shoulders of Black Dragon's inability to be able to figure out where Liquid is. They tried to get locations on the droners, or, or on the roamers by droning. They found, where they found where Zig was. He was playing up top inside of CCTV. They didn't figure out where Nesk was because he rotated downstairs to ventilation and into the then into the back of Workshop. We saw he started things off by taking out the Thermite, and well, he basically caught Black Dragons with their pants down at that point. They were trying to push into sight, and they got cut up not able to pull off the execute. So once again, Black Dragons falling short of what they need to do to get the information. They go in blind. This time around, okay, well, they don't know where the site players are in the first two rounds. They try to push in, they get cut off as they try to entry. Defenders, Big problem. They, they entry just fine this time. They had a pretty decent amount of map control. But the bigger issue was that when they went to go for the execute, they hadn't pinched a single roamer. And the roamers came back to site and caught them. Black Dragons was trying to get in to get the Diffuser down. This is not Villa. We're not playing Villa, okay? Border, it's easy to isolate and clear out the Roamers. It really, no, okay, not not easy in that all these players are somehow more docile because it's Border. Easy in that, there's, it's, it's, a, it's something that you should have figured out, any team. It's, it's Border, this is one of the staples of Siege Comp. And more than that, it's not really that big of a map. I am really confused as to how, uh, why, why Black Dragons are struggling so much to isolate and clear out these roamers that are in pretty standard positions. I mean, okay, Nesk, last round, where was Nesk? He was playing inside of Workshop. Okay, so, drawing him out. Okay, you see he's in work Workshop, great. Open up the wall from bathroom, start applying pressure from there in the hallway. Uh, don't push everyone in the hallway like you did last round. <laughs> You know, get a crossfire going, start working the angles, and you know, taking it one step at a time. It looked like in that round, Black Dragons wanted to push the site before they even had control of their own flank. Confusing. And it's been the way they've been playing pretty much throughout this whole match thus far. So it's something that I think they're gonna need to improve upon. Again, this is this is not a big new map with potential, you know, hidey holes and flanks that you, you haven't figured out how to properly isolate like Villa. This is this is border. It, it, it should be well understood at this point. Yeah. So back up we go. A minute into round number four and the site rotation will complete.
complete itself, meaning that we can have Team Liquid return to the very first site of the game onto Armory. Mm -hmm. So there we have it. You have Gohan playing on Smoke. So this is the second time that we'll see a different member of Team Liquid adopt this operator as their own. You saw Sexy Cake playing Smoke to great use on the Ventilation Workshop site in round number two. So a mirror window on the Armory wall is not something that we see all that often, but I think it plays in well to the way that Liquid has opened this site up. You yeah. see the entire floor of that small office has been opened and it's also going to mean that this armory wall getting opened up could possibly be a major detriment to Liquid's strategy because now they're going to have a very far line of sight all the way in, especially if you can use some of that caliber-based destruction to open up the soft wall into small office, which I would imagine is part of Black Dragon's intent here. Though Black Dragon's has righted the ship, so to speak, it's going to be an armory take on their side of things instead of office. The beautiful thing about the take that Black Dragon's has chosen to use here is that they only need to isolate one flank, and that's CCTV. Just put one person there and you're good to go. You can make your push in, but you have to be wary of the vertical pressure potential for C4 down below. Luckily for them, that shouldn't be a problem. Unluckily for them, they don't have very much time left. And as Zig eats a little bit of damage there from Hunk Zord, they are going to have to start thinking more about when they want to commit to this push. The gas canisters are going to be a significant delay here. And uh, you see Gohan starting to whip them out. Smokes, though, from Hunkzord to attempt a counter, and the push should be now, as that's the only set of smokes the attackers have, or at least I believe so. Fuser being planted right now by GDN. He should be completely covered, but no, Gohan with the vault. A beautiful play from the smoke to salvage that. Grenades from below trying to do some damage, but oh no, Panico just barely winning a fight against Sexy Cake. It's just Palu right now in a one versus three as Iblax is on the floor. So the attack is going decently, but look at the time. The Fuser not planted yet, and there you go. It finally will hit the floor. It's all up to Palu. And he's done some damage to Panico on those main stairs. So he's got a little bit in his corner. Iblack should be recovered. At least it's possible. And Ion's, it, before we even get there, Ion's going to win the fight against Paula as he attempts to peek from archives. Overall, I think Liquid set themselves up well, but they just didn't win any of the initial fights. So much went wrong for Black Dragons there, yet they ended up winning the round. Yeah, exactly. You saw the Finca, the frag grenades got eaten by ADSs. The smoke canisters went off while they were mid-adrenal surge, which means that you deal more damage with uh -huh. those toxic canisters to the attackers. Gohan vaulting in and stopping the plant amidst the shroud of smoke that had been set up that was designed to try and give Black Dragons coverage, but in all reality completely blocked off Gohan from being spotted onto his approach towards that diffuser. A lot of things really did not work out well for Black Dragons, yet they still managed to walk away with it. And a lot of that came down to great coverage and sloppy rotates from Liquid, putting themselves into harm's way because there was nowhere to hide because a lot of that soft destruction didn't leave them ways to be able to play around and not have Black Dragons see where they were. Attackers need to locate- I said it at the beginning of the round, I'll say it again. What's the difference in that attack from the rest of them? There's nowhere to flank from. CCTV, that's the best you can really do, is you're gonna come from CCTV, and that flank is completely isolated. It's not an option, it really isn't. One person pointing a barrel at a door, and then maybe they can impact through the soft destruction, but even then, that can be rotated into an account for. My point here is that Liquid could not really flank Black Dragons, and because they couldn't, it came down to those one-on-ones, those direct front, you know, confrontations. Black Dragons won in that, and they need to be uh, capable of forcing those more often. I think that's going to be what will allow them to get the win here against Liquid, is if they can force the direct confrontations and isolate those flanks. It's really that simple. They did it last round, and they got the win, and pretty, pretty dominantly so. And as you said, they had a lot of things going against them. So, well done to them. Now well, they are going to be starting things off here in this round, taking control of East Stairs. Pretty standard fare here as they are attacking on to Workshop. I'm wondering how much of this setup is going to differ here on Liquid's side of things. Mm. As you can still see, it's really imperative for them that they keep control of that second floor as long as is humanly possible, and that really plays into the way that Liquid's strategy is set up. It's going to be a little bit different, though, for Liquid, as they have a chance to go back to Armory, but I don't think they liked what they saw, and they'll roll with Vents and Workshop down below. The only real question is, what are we going to see out of Black Dragons in regards to a change-up? You have to give a lot of praise to Black Dragons to change from an office take to an Armory wall take, and read it so correctly. 
especially with the way that Liquid had that yeah. Mira set up and there was no real control in small office. Very difficult for you to try and defend Armory Wall when you don't have control of the, or Armory rather as a site, when you don't have control of the wall nor the small office. You essentially have to try to battle back from either CCTV, which Liquid did not have adequate control of, or inside of Archives. So difficult for them in that regard. So Black Dragon's trying to clear their way onto Armory, get above the site. They're gonna get the first kill, that's Apollo. Going down to Hugzord. So nice pick there. And that, I believe, was on a long angle just through the armory doorway and uh, that uh, small office doorway as well. Sexy Cake will eat some damage from that very same angle as he falls back to the site. Nesk, on his own retreat, will take down Iblax, but he eats a lot of damage in the exchange and has been put down to just about 15. GDN also going to get another one for his team. So Black Dragon's certainly in the driver's seat here. Gohan looking to flank from East Stairs as a little bit of a Hail Mary, but this is very risky. It could easily result in the w victory for his team. It could also cost them another member and make the last remaining defenders' lives even more difficult. Nesk downstairs in ventilation is going to be playing with fire. He's got two bodies above him, and Gohan will be tagged in to assist, eliminating Panico, meaning that there will be no more adrenal surges whatsoever as the Finca falls, and the frag grenades also go down. 30 seconds for Black Dragons to pull off this execute. Nesk still a man living on borrowed time, but Black Dragons have not been able to spot him. With limited destruction in the environment from above, Ion will need to try to protect the rest of his team. Execute goes down as the smokes get tossed in from Hugzord. Uh -oh. Black Dragon's waiting to vault right in, but there's Nest with one. He tears him a piece. Waiting for the second to pop in, and a pre-fire goes in. It's a beautiful rally from Nesk and Sexy Cake with his own kill. Be Liquid finding their momentum yet again. They lost the last round, but they'll steal this one back. We'll head to the final round for Liquid's defense. That one can easily be put on Hugzord's shoulders. That's, that's, he, okay, that round could have gone either way. Into the, going into the dying seconds of that, it could have been a Black Dragon's take successful into B, but what happened? Hugzord missed his smokes. Because he did not land a smoke in a position that would cover the vault in through the window, unfortunately, there was no potential there for a round recovery. I will say, this is important to note, they were playing against the Legion. I believe it was Nesk playing against the Legion who had traps under the window. So even if there were smokes in his line of sight, it's very likely he could have sprayed through the smoke as soon as he saw his traps detonate or goo, goo mines detonate and probably gotten the kill either way. But the potential did not exist for you to skate by Nesk because there was smoke did not land in the right position. So. You know, it came down to the high pressure situation, and unfortunately, he just did not land the smokes. It happens. We're going to be seeing a little bit of a change here, and more smoke being added to the Black Dragon's attack. Panico will be going on to Montaigne. An interesting transition. We saw them think about it a couple rounds ago. They were uh, debating bringing the Montaigne, but they decided not to in the end, and uh, now they're finally going to commit fully. But the thing is, they're committing a little bit late. As you said, this is the last Attackers attacking the round for Black Dragons. You really don't want to end the half by one, so this is where they need to make the most of it. And uh, trying something new? Maybe this isn't the perfect situation for that. Maybe it is. We'll find out, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see the way the Monty plays out on this one because I don't know how much has, has happened from Black Dragon side of things where a shield can stop Liquid in its tracks, especially with the fact that Liquid has been bringing a smoke and, and a lesion on almost every single round. Now, lucky for Black Dragons, there is no lesion on Liquid's side of things. So there's going to be very minimal ways to take out oh, yeah. this smoke or take out this Monty outside of the smoke. You've technically got C4, but that's less effective than it used to be. Uh, you've got the smokes, which is, you know, good, but you need to use him for other things. And the Maestro, maybe, but he'll probably see his evil eyes destroyed the same way they've been pretty easily destroyed so far by the Zofia. So, yeah, I mean, this Montaigne could be really, really powerful if played properly. They've got a good read on it, too, on Liquid side of things, with the Valkyrie cameras positioned on the entry points onto the second floor. You see Sexy Cakes cam inside of the break room. We'll spot the hulking shield of Panico, who decides, hey, maybe we'll retreat 
and with the rest of his team, and he escorted both the Zofia and the Thatcher heading over towards the Armory side of things. Black Dragons have had far more success attacking Armory side takes than they have over on the office, and, well, they're hoping that it continues, this time with Ion getting the very first kill. Apollo will go down, and then so does Gohan and Zig as well. Total wow. aerial superiority for Black Dragons there as they hold the hatch inside of CCTV, pick up three kills, they're gonna find their fourth. Means it's Sexy Cake. One minute and 10 seconds left is in a 1v5. Not a situation you want to find yourself in uh, with that SMG 11 in hand. He's going to use one toxic canister as a means of distraction before he hits it, but unable to control the bobble of that SMG will be the end of the smoke. Black Dragons with a flawless round to cap things off. They'll transition towards defense as it's a 4-2 split, still in favor of Team Liquid. Black Dragons showing signs of promise in the final three rounds. Yeah, that was a really perfectly executed round, I gotta be honest. Uh, a good ad ad adaptation from what we've seen from, uh, in the past. When they attacked Customs last, they went for a passport take, and they didn't isolate their flanks, they didn't clear out workshops, so they got torn apart as they attempted to push in the main hallway downstairs. This time, instead, they committed to the CCTV take, rightfully so. They even brought Montaigne, which is a perfect tool, in my opinion, to attack CCTV. Just force your way in, and uh, they made Liquid's defense Really just fall apart. So props to Black Dragons adjusting, and that's I think the main reason that they got any rounds in that first half is that they changed things. As you said, in their the first round that they managed to win, it was attack onto Armory, and uh, the reason they were able to win it is that they adjusted from an office take to an Armory wall take. The reason they did that, of course, is because they were not doing great at isolating their flanks, and uh, you don't really need to do too much of that when attacking Armory wall. Same thing when attacking CCTV and the bombsite is in custom. So Black Dragons, again, weren't able to put themselves into just direct confrontations, Bomb went out. Now they will be going on to defense, though, so they're going to have to play the other angle. Five seconds left they're going to have to play around with those roamers and make sure that they are the ones putting Liquid in an awkward position. Now keep in mind, Black Dragon's attacking ban was on Buck, so they deliberately played around, so they didn't need a Buck, obviously. It was likely done to affect Liquid. So we'll see what kind of soft destruction and mayhem will or will not be caused with that Operator ban. Liquid, of course, bringing an abundance of soft destruction with the Sledge and the Ash, and I mean, you don't really necessarily bring the Ash for soft destruction when you got Nesk on your team. You bring her because, well, she's pretty gosh darn good. Also, as, as we talked about at the beginning of the match, you don't have Buck anymore. You need more out or more forms of soft destruction. Uh, and also, Explosion. Since Maestro's in play, there's no Echo. You need to destroy the Evil Eyes. So it's an option. You got the grenades too, so that's gonna be a good kit. Surprising that we don't see Black Dragons with the Maestro, though. I mean, Maestro is such a staple of a lot of these defensive teams. He yeah. does tend to be one of the most banned operators. And in the good hands, attackers. or in uh, in the right hands, and in good hands he can be particularly powerful. He's still gonna wanna bring things to counter him in this right. situation. I'm surprised that, uh, just as surprised as you, that, that they haven't brought Maestro. Yeah, so, I mean, Black Dragons obviously running something with the Montaigne, and now obviously running without the Maestro shows that they have some preparation and a good entry from Nesk is quickly cut down by the Pulse with a C4 from below. The Ash, known as an operator, operating at very quick speeds. Maybe a little bit too slow there, and that'll leave Panico down below. Just continue feeding intel to the rest of his team. As first Doka be called, will signal towards Team Liquid where the location of Black Dragons will be, and there's gonna be another C4 uh -oh. that goes off, and oh, Paulo, you're just a bit too slow to catch the Valkyrie, but Gohan's not, as he'll help you. He tagged in. Sees the lesion as well for just a second, but that F2 cannot connect where needed. SMG 12 in the hands of Sexy Cake will take out Panico, and now Liquid inside of sight. Sexy Cake picking up his own after two from Black Dragons. Is it a 2v2? Still the phones will ring, and Paulo from above waiting to see where that lesion is going to appear from. Both members of Black Dragons up above and Palu just narrowly missing out. Oh, a great shot from Ion. I believe Sexy Cake down below. What an interesting set of circumstances this is. Sexy Cake does not have that diffuser, Michael, and with 40 seconds, he's gonna go retrieve it. Both members of Black Dragons, both members of Black Dragons, not bothering to silence those phones. So the difficulty here is that uh, the diffuser is exposed completely to these last two defenders. So if they play this correctly, ooh, the smoke could be a beautiful counter. And one DMR hit to Hugzord is going to do quite a lot of damage. That could potentially 
come back to bite him that he gave that away. 60 Cake is playing this perfectly, but look at the time. He's only got 15 seconds, and Ion has managed to rotate back to sight, playing this perfectly. He knows where Sexy is going to come from, and he's isolated the angle, waiting just for the right moment. And here it comes, but the smoke! A beautiful smoke once more! An attempted plant, but it's not gonna matter. Hugsword comes from the hallway, and Black Dragons locks out the round. A nice try, though, to Sexy Cake. Good call from Black Dragons to rotate there after they knew where the smoke was coming from, and that's just one of the things that works when you have a numbers advantage. You have a 1v2 situation, and you happen to be the two in that equation? You can cover a lot more than just the person who needs to sit vulnerable for seven seconds to get that diffuser down. Just unfortunate timing for Sexy Cake and a great read from Black Dragons to make that call happen. Also, wondering how much of that threw off Liquid with a ventilation workshop defense from BD first. I mean, you're going to bring a toolkit to attack most sites. Border Armory does end up being the site that you want to go to the most. But yep. Benson Workshop very defendable. It's not It's not a situation where you're at a huge disadvantage. I have to be honest, uh, I think Vincent Workshop and uh, Armory Archives Defenders are interchangeable on, on border. I think that's just kind of how they play out. I mean, they're right on top of it. One's on top of the other. Right? Uh, and, and as we saw in that round, how did they defend Vince from Armory? The last two defenders were the ones that were playing upstairs. And they lost sight control, but it didn't end up mattering because the diffuser was lost, well, down on the floor because the roam clearers had the diffuser. So that was, I mean, if we're going to analyze that round and point the finger at one specific reason why Liquid lost it, it's not because they failed to clear the top floor, though that it could, that could be one of the biggest reasons. The big the biggest reason is that they put the diffuser in the hands of one of their roam clearers instead of one of the people who was pushing the site. So that's just... That's just some roundabout stuff there. Uh, an easy solution in the future for Liquid, if they if they think about it. Maybe don't maybe don't put your diffuser on a roam clear. But you know, of course, that also has to that comes down to uh, Black Dragons killing that individual upstairs and uh, outright denying Armory control to Liquid. So good job to Black Dragons for pulling that off, seriously, and uh, making Liquid work for every inch on the top floor. They never even fully got control of it. Now, moving on to the next round. This time, it will be Armory. A very similar toolkit from Team Liquid coming out here, and quite a bit of Finca play from both sides of the teams. The way that this Finca is going to likely be used is just try and isolate GDN, hope that the toxic canisters get baited out as quickly as they can so that you don't take increased damage from Finca's adrenal, adrenal surge, and then get into sight. Nesk is already accurate as is, as is Paulu, but how scary the F2 and the R4C are with zero recoil for the 10 second period of time you know, from Finca's ability. So Black Dragons with a very similar setup to what we saw from Liquid, but those walls give and those walls take away. In the case of Black Dragons, they will take away there as Panico gets too aggressive. It pops up at the wrong time. Yeah. So uh, you said it yourself, very similar to what we were seeing from Liquid. Open. Everywhere open all the time. A little bit more investment in CCTV here from Black Dragons. You can see they got the mirror window set up going on, the uh, the old 75% hold. And, uh, it, it's definitely a viable strategy, especially considering these Twitch drones are being eliminated. Good job there to GDN. Uh, when you have a mirror window set up the way that you do right now on the defense, the Twitch drones become even more valuable. So it's a good pick from Liquid, but he's going to have to play it a little bit better if he wants to uh, assist his team using that gadget. Overall, the setup working okay for Black Dragons, and one Twitch drone will see success. A mirror window in B taken down, and that will very likely shift the attack entirely to an office take. Unfortunate for GDN as he did get the drone right as the tase went off, and Black Dragons will now essentially be corralled over on the western side of Armory. Just GDN trying to stop against the hordes. But you've got the ACOG on the Alda, and Hugzord will take out Zig as Liquid's entry is stopped just a tiny bit. And Sexy Cake falls to GDN as well. Oh. There's a second from GDN. Finally, Gohan will respond by eliminating Ion. So we're at a 3v2, and Gohan looking for the C4 cannot track it. Nask will just crouch in and take out Iblacks, twisting in the wind inside a small office. Hugzord with a great bounce back. He started things and he'll end them as well. Nesk, no way out of that small office with time on Black Dragon's side. 
and Michael, we are all tied up. Yeah, Black Dragons has yet to drop a defense, Parker, and honestly, they look a lot more dominant when they are the ones receiving their opponents. Now, both defense so far from them have been solid. The thing is, though, they have to come out of the comfort zone and go to an off site because they've had two successes in a row. And that site that is going to be Bathroom Tellers. Instead of going to Customs as Liquid did, they will go to the, uh, I, I'd say the, the more narrow bomb site. You play it the same way as Customs. You need to play above. You need to hold offices. But it's, it's a lot less ground to cover. And that could work Defender, for you to work against you. It really depends that. on how you as a team like to set yourselves up. So the team that was yeah, formerly Team location. 1, by the way, mm -hmm. I have my notes written down. Yeah, I, I was instructed uh, that I said the wrong organization name. So an apology, of course. Really? Yeah, so Black Dragons was formerly Team 1, which I know because of Panico playing on the team, but I was like, when I was doing, oh, yeah. doing pre-prep today, oh. I wrote it all down again, and then I just got the signals crossed in my brain. It happens, Parker. Don't happens. worry about it. Yes, I, the team I, I formerly think, known as Team One. I th if it makes you feel better, I think that when when we started the broadcast, I think I called Panico Panics. So it's not an excuse that we haven't casted for like a month, but I mean it's cer it's, it's <laughs> certainly it is certainly a means of understanding why there is going to be some uh, I don't want to say rust, but some wood shedding that will need to be done in order to get back to the level when you're in the. When you're in the, in the thick of it, but that's the good thing is, is that we have no shortage of matches to cast over the next 20 <laughs> some odd days. Dude, it's gonna we be. We got lots of practice. I'm ahead ready of us. for the grind. So I am. I'm ready for the grind as well. I installed a uh, an IV drip of coffee into my flat earlier this morning, <laughs> and I intend to live as long as I can with that thing in my arm. So yeah. we'll make it through. So apologies to Black Dragons, the team formerly known as Team One. I have it written down. I can even take a picture for people if they want from the first. He has proof. The first. Broadcast from played at number one. This is BD, formerly Team One. I am formerly BKG. Red Devils came in on a relegation. So anyway. There's a game happening. There is a game happening, and Black Dragons, over the last five rounds, they've taken four of them. A big yeah. part of that is we saw some innovation from Team Liquid through their first deep three defenses. We saw some things, very loose roams, and for Black Dragons, they appeared very puzzled. When Liquid is unpredictable, it works quite well, and Look no further than what just happened on your screen. You're going to see the Sledge of Gohan eliminate the smoke of Black Dragons in the first minute and 20 seconds. It's an operator that you shouldn't be losing until the dying minutes or the dying seconds of a round. We can also, though, point a finger at Black Dragons for that one because, I mean, it's the same thing we saw from the Legion in the previous round for Black Dragons. And now Ion, as he's attempting to hold onto the armory wall, he will be felled by Nesk. A simple use of flashbangs and a knife. That's all you really need in this instance. Why? Because Black Dragons are playing too aggressive. They're leaving themselves wholly exposed. Nesk is gonna get another kill this time on two Panico, and it's just leaving Hunkzord and I Black. So a two versus five does not look good for Black Dragons right this second. They're trying their best to hold on to sight, but Gohan's gonna get his second, and that's all down to Hugzord now as a result. Sprays, but misses, and the follow-up will go his way. So an excellent win there on to Gohan, who has been on a tear so far in this round. He's going to attempt to push his way up to the main stairs, and the phone call not making this easy for him. He's aware somebody's playing inside of workshop and servers, but unable to exact their location. Now, pushing back into the hallway, just going to eat a little bit more damage there on the pixel angle, and finally die to Paulo. Hangzor did his best to prolong that round. Bathroom Tellers is not an easy site to defend. No here. For a lot of teams, it works if you're really, really aggressive. Like you said, Black Dragons had to get aggressive, but for Black Dragons, aggression has not really worked all that well. They got a little aggressive when they were on attack for the first two rounds, when they were attacking both Armory and Vents at the start of this game. They got too aggressive, it wasn't coordinated, and it didn't really look like they were in sync with one another, and they just got fed into the wood chipper. And yeah. Liquid just shredded them. And the same thing just happened now was that when Black Dragons tries to get aggressive without coordination, Liquid is there to capitalize. So it's very difficult, I think, just at face value, to be able to try and to defend a site that relies on you being very well coordinated, and I don't think Black Dragons had that. So I'm just going to pick this apart once, one thing, uh, one step at a time, going through all the defenses that we've seen from Black Dragons so far. The two that they managed to win on Ventilation and Armory, the big Attack reason that they won, in my mind, is that Liquid was too spread out. 
Liquid on both of those rounds attempted to push two different locations at the same time. And because they had their manpower so split, they were unable to really, well, not just refrag each other, but, you know, have a powerful enough push, a confident enough push in any location to get anything done. And because Black Dragons in those two rounds was, uh, because of that, Black Dragons in those two rounds was allowed to take individual engagements. In that last round that we just saw from Liquid, they had a clear and concise understanding of what they were trying to do. Push armory, clear armory, once we have armory, take control of above the site and then push into the site, plant the trees are easy, easy, it's done, right? They did split, split up, but only after they established a significant manpower advantage. And it wasn't even, none of those engagements that they had early on were really just like one individual. Okay, sure, yeah, uh, the, the sledge getting a kill, in the first couple seconds onto the on the smoke, that's over aggression on Black Dragon, GDN specifically. But the rest of it, I mean, I don't even Nesk I don't I don't even sorry, I don't even think Nesk flashed himself in to uh, to Armory Wall. I think it was somebody else flashing him in. I think it was a thermite. So you know it's it's coordination on Team Liquid's part and it's because they're stacked up next to each other. They need they need that. They definitely need that on these attacks. If they're able to continue showing us that Fantastic! I think they're gonna they're gonna win a lot more round, uh, a lot more rounds. It's gonna be a lot easier. And following up with that, with Liquid and their coordination, I mean, they thrived under the Lion meta where you needed a, a maximum amount of coordination to make everything fall into yeah. place. Now, of course, Lion, as an operator, allows for coordination to be a far with far less effort, just simply by nature of his gadget. But Liquid really excelled, and oh, that's a rare miss for Gohan as three guns cannot take out Ion. He's almost digging himself an early grave with how aggressive he's getting. It looks like Gohan's grenade this will miss both times. Downed Ion, though, so you've got Zig using his Xkaros, opening up that armory wall. Great opportunity to push in. Ion will get reset, so nothing really of value lost from Black Dragons except for control of armory side. Now, Black Dragons' first victory on defense came into vents, so that's back where they are. They're on that main floor. So Liquid is going to need to concern themselves with capturing all of Armory Small Office and then where Black Dragons is really hunkered down, which is the archive side of things upstairs. But I'm going to say it again. I said it before. The reason that Liquid lost on this site, they were too split up. This time around, though, they've managed to bring everyone together to one big fearsome ball of attackers. And because of that, they're now establishing control on the top floor, a feat that they were not able to accomplish the last time they attacked this site. You got the mirror playing over by that rotate hole. Especially with the nitro cell in hand, it means that Liquid are going to have to clear that out before they can try and drop. As for the rest of Black Dragons, they don't really know where the push is going to come from. You can see both Ion and Panico in positions that are pretty common. You've got the castle playing at the bottom of main stairs, and you've got Ion watching into Passport just in case there's going to be a drop. Perfect timing for the defense of Black Dragons to toss out one of the toxic canisters, and Hugzord waiting for a vault in amidst a smoke thrown out from Liquid. Me some softening up of Gohan with the UMP, but Paulo will start things off by finishing off Ion. GDN refrags onto Nesk, and Hugzord primed with C4 in hand. Oh no! Oh, but it misses! No, the smoke! Hugzord, a big mistake, and Liquid will capitalize, and Gohan shuts two oh. down. It's all up to Panico, but he'll stop the diffuser on oh. his tracks! It's all up to Liquid to get it back and go for the play. <laughs> but they run out of time, and Black Dragons, a beautiful recovery. And it's all up to the castle at the bottom of the stairs to catch Liquid in the plant with not enough coverage. And Liquid not having the wherewithal to grab that diffuser and be able to stick the landing. He'll tie us back up at 5-5, and we're going to need every single round of this game for a conclusion. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll be honest, completely honest here. Black Dragon should have had that round regardless of the clutch from the castle at the end there. Uh, the C4 should have landed. It should have gotten two kills, maybe one at the, at the least. That was a big whoops there on, uh, on the mirror's part. But, uh, wow, what a clutch at the end. That was... Definitely a Team Liquid round. They played everything perfectly, but then they forgot to hold the main hallway. Whoops, it happens, it does, but uh, that is a big mistake. I have noticed that Liquid has been very sloppy in their containment. It's been a big problem for them a lot of these rounds, uh, and it was a big problem for them in that round. What do I mean by containment? I mean, okay, 
Liquid figured out that they need to have a clearer understanding of what they're trying to accomplish at the beginning of a round so that they can establish the control they need in order to execute the attack they want to execute. In this case, that initial control was the top floor. They committed everybody to that. They had that once they figured out, okay, we have top floor control. Now we can split up. At least the people upstairs start pushing into the site. No big deal. And it worked out. It was a little bit late. It just kind of took them a long time, but it worked out for the most part. The problem was, after they got full control, they started getting all these frags, and everything started to go their way, and oh, it's a, there's only one defender left. They lost containment. They lost control. They started frag chasing. They did not hold the front door. And it's an easy thing to hold the front door. At least somebody outside. Really, I mean, I know it's a boring role. It is. Nobody likes doing that. It's, it's not fun. But when you have somebody do it, it's free kills for them, and it's round wins. You had four people alive, and nobody's bothering to watch the bottom of main stairs, which is Why? a pretty common place for the defendants to be. And I mean, heading into the execute, it was a it was a five v five. Yeah. You suspect there's going to be somebody playing either over by the custom side of things or by the bottom of main stairs because you know that you can cover two entries. Mm -hmm. You can cover the main door and you cover the entry and events while also covering the entry into the server side of workshop. It's a great position to play in. And usually it's one of the first to get cleared out because you're very vulnerable. And but it was the last and ended up being the most problematic for Liquid. It's the lack of containment on Liquid's side. And it was the same problem that Black Dragons had. If we go back to the first half, it was the same exact thing. Uh, except for Black Dragons skipped a couple more steps. They didn't even begin to clear at all. But all that is, is done now. Uh, a mistake I'm sure that Liquid will improve upon in the, in the future. But for now, they're trying to clear out offices and they've got a mirror window in their way. How unfortunate for Liquid that they don't have a pair of frag grenades on their side of things. Yes, there is an no. ADS by Panico playing inside of office. Position. And I mean, you can take out the ADS quite easily and then just drop a care package down on top of the lesion and say so long to oh. where he is. But Zig's drone is in an excellent spot to be able to give as much information as is need be to this team. Unable to get the lesion though will mean that one round of those Xcaros from Zig launched in onto the archives wall will basically be a complete and utter waste. Meanwhile, Gohan's just gonna vault right into the vent window and oh, he sees one that F2 is so strong and out he goes. Okay. Like a jack in the box, tossed in. And a lot of utility will get dumped in to try and take this lesion and well, he is gone. Nesk will be there as well. So two for Liquid and Hugzord now. Amidst the smoke, finds one, tears through Sexy Cake. His phone will continuously give his position away. Almost gets the down onto Zig, looking for the plan, and Hugzord will have to quarterback what little is left of the defense from Black Dragons. Match point is on the line with Ion there, and Nesk shutting down Hugzord will leave just the carbine of the Jaeger. But there's four angry Hornets right now, trying to sting Ion as best as he can. Completely out of ammo on both guns. Diffuser goes down, and Gohan finishing things off. Liquid. A triumphant bounce back in that round. Black Dragons just ultimately could not survive the push. Inadequate coverage from Black Dragons there. The opposite of what happened in that previous round with Liquid having inadequate coverage. And now it's match point for Liquid trying to put this away, but also the possibility of our first Latin America draw between these two teams. You know, I don't think I'm... I, I feel weird saying it, Parker, but I, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I, when I say that in this match we've seen a lot of basics kind of overlooked. Uh, it, it's confusing, it really is. I mean, on, on attack, both teams have struggled to not only clear out their flanks, but then once they have them cleared, hold them, or, you know, or isolate them, or whatever you want to call. On, on defense, how the heck is Gohan vaulting vent window and then walking into sight and killing your smoke? How is no one watching that? What is going on there? I, I, I am truly puzzled, and that's, that is that is defaults right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's basic stuff. That's not even that's not a complicated hold on a weird flank. That's you know if you if you really don't want to watch it, put some barbed wire there. You know, something to to confront somebody who's going to try and hold, held him up at the beginning. And uh, you might feel like I'm harping on this a little bit too much, but that's the smoke that they killed. That is one of the most important operators of your entire defense. And he is in the linchpin position of holding Archives, which is the site your opponent is trying to push. He could do so much damage there. And we've seen him do damage there before. The last time Black Dragons defended Armory, they managed to win it. Why? Their smoke pushed into offices, destroyed Liquid. The other thing, too, was that was basically two kills for the price of for the price of one, essentially, because the only person that was keeping the Legion alive was the smoke. Exactly. To yeah. get the crossfire into yeah. offices, the moment that the smoke fell, 
on Black Dragon's side of things, and you don't have GDN to give the coverage to the Legion, Black Dragon loses the Legion playing by the wall inside of Office as well. So you end up going from a 5v5 to a 3v5 very fast for Black Dragons, all because nobody was watching one of the most common spots to look at inside of the site, which is that vent window. And, and furthermore, it could have gone even worse for Black Dragons. Think if Team Liquid had have invested even one other person to get the diffuse planted on that window instead yeah. of the kill, I mean, that round could have been over much faster. I mean, it's it's a jackal that's on the window instead of a twitch. He walks in, gets the kill, throws a smoke, you start planting the diffuser, round's over, man. Yeah. All right, well, all said and done now. We're a minute into this round, and Black Dragons still have control of CCTV. They're going for the 75%. This is, again, okay, technically it worked out for them last time, uh, but very narrowly, and uh, it was oh just- my. Oh, wow, Nesk, what an angle. A beautiful shot through, from the west balcony. It, it looked like he actually got the shot through the CCTV window, or he was either in CCTV through that soft He couldn't have been in CCTV, because I think Black Dragon still has control of CCTV. It looked like it was from the west balcony to me. It could have just been that he was hugging the wall really tight, but That's that, what is, I'm that is a beautiful shot. Yeah. Whether it's in CCTV or not. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was from the, the west balcony corner. But yeah, very clean and tight shot there. And that is Maestro of, massive loss. of all your operators gone. Uh, the evil eyes are now locked in place. And it was so early in the round, all things considered, that it, they could be in bad spots. Ness gets another one. Pala, one for himself. And Ion attempting a run out there, maybe to try and equalize. Or no, he's coming back from CCTV just because his anchors are dead. A beautiful shot onto Nesk. But uh, he's going to have to get a, quite a few more kills to get this back in his team's court. It's very difficult running against the composition that Liquid has been bringing, and especially a lot of annoyance that's what? not really working all that well. Uh, <laughs> Misread not, there. Not really working, uh, I guess, as well to counter it for Black Dragons as they would like. C4 Defender wasted by Iblacks. Yes, operation. you said it, a misread. Iblacks with the rotate all the way from CCTV over to Armory does not get detected, so Black Dragons knows that they have to focus quite heavily on this office side of things. Ion with an ACOG in hand, looking through beepers all the way down. He's got the open wall, but he's gonna get pushed from the B site. He's also got an open wall into office. This is one of those situations where it's gonna be very difficult in order to stop them. Only Iblacks had a C4 in that circumstance. <laughs> I was about to be able to take, take, to be able to take <laughs> the diffuser down. Sexy Cake is gonna wander right in, and Iblacks looking to try to keep this in his team's favor and fight for the draw, despite overwhelming odds. Go on, taking down Ion, and it's the Vector. Unable to outduel the F2 and Gohan. Two kills to finish that round off, and Liquid pick up their first victory of the season. An admirable fight from Black Dragons, who have been looking pretty good. The former roster of Team One now competing under Black Dragons, in case you're curious. And as the trend continues, we need all 12 rounds of this new format in order to make this game work. Excellent job to Liquid there. Yeah, but let nobody say that Black Dragons didn't put up a fight. They really did. That was a good job for them. Uh, however, Liquid just played better in the end, and that's all that really matters. Now, I, I have to say, overall, for that match, some serious mistakes being made by both teams, and uh, very basic ones. I think it might be something like what we were saying.